Welcome back, guys, to episode six of the Coffee Corner with Marco and Martha. Um, today we have a really, really cool guest. Um, well, all of our guests have been cool. I can't say really, yeah. really cool this time. They all have been cool. They all have been kind of um, hanging out with us. They all have been really good sports. Um, our next guest today is one of our managers, but he came into uh, his kind of position here at Superior uh, kind of very early, very early on, so we're really excited to talk to him and get to know him a little bit. His name is Cadet. Cadet, Woo! come on down. Cadet, thank you so, so much for being on the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Have a seat, have a seat. Welcome. the coffee corner. Yeah. Good having you, man. Thank you for having me. I know we kind of talked, I think, a while back, we were going to have him on the show, but then it kind of it actually happened, so we're really excited. We're really excited yeah. to talk to you. Glad to be here. And yeah. ask you. Um, really quick, uh, for those, uh, all those at home watching on Work Vivo, can you pronounce your first name? Yes. Uh, my first name is Diebu, but I like to go by Cadet. It's much easier. And everybody Diebu. knows me as Big Company. I, I didn't want to butcher it, so that's why I didn't say it. Everybody, <laughs> and everyone knows you as Cadet, so it's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Right? Awesome. All right. <laughs> so two and a half years. Um, your start date was 8 16 2021, a uh, year after COVID. That's actually pretty awesome because I re do remember. It just being a weird time in everyone's life where their like healthcare was just kind of not the greatest. Everyone was kind of still on that you know high level threat of hey something's going on. You know I don't really want to get involved, but you know he did it. He did yeah, it. It's what, awesome. That's what really made cool. you want to do? Work, like what pushed you in that direction? Uh, for me, it really was uh, working at Glenbrook Hospital as a security guard, oh, okay. and especially during that time, Glenbrook was known as one of the COVID hospital hotspots, just to say. It was. And um, just interacting with a lot of the superior crew members going in and out, I had to escort them to like the elevators and seeing how they interact with their patient, just seeing how they use their beer sets, like even their critical ones that was intubated and just on high blood oxygen. I was just curious, and I was like, how did I? How can I get involved in this? How can I do more? And a lot of my former peers at the hospital was like, at the time I was still kind of young, I was like probably 25, 26 at the time, and it was like, you're built for more for uh, healthcare than just pretty much, you know, sitting and watching psych patients and doing transports like this. So it was definitely a good feeling to be there. That's, that's awesome. awesome. I, I started the exact same way. Uh, well, I was, in, uh, I was working as a security guard at uh, St. Joe's in Chicago while I was in EMT school. Oh, but same thing, I would see Superior stop by, and I was just like, hmm, can I, can I do that? That's really cool. That's, awesome. you know, that's, that's, really, that's actually really cool. Yeah, and then a lot of, and some of these people that I interact with are, like, really close with now, and they were like, it's crazy to see you where you made it this far so quickly. Right. And a lot of people have been here for, like, five plus years, and they was like, you made it through, management, you became management within a year of being at EMT. So, they definitely see the dedication and drive that I have, so. Right. Just want to keep leveling up as much as I can. <laughs> you said you said about watching psych patients. That was a job that we had to do. Mm -hmm. just sit there, and just until they either got transferred up to the floor or someone picked them so up, mm -hmm. it was it was painful. Especially during <laughs> that painful. COVID time, it was like yeah. you never know who was positive, who wasn't. So mm -hmm. it was definitely a challenge, especially in the beginning when it was hard to get gear before we got the funding for you know the hospitals. Was like all right. We gotta protect our staff too, not just the medical personnel, but also our personnel that's actually helping us treat, watch the patient. Because everybody was short staffed, everybody was quitting and going, so we stepped up as security guards. So that's what I saw. Did you did you talk to somebody at the at the hospital that you saw that was like, hey, how do I get into this? Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple actually. They're on our critical care team now. Um, nice. Couple, top, couple top of my head is Danny and uh, Julie. They oh, used yeah. to always, uh, they used to be at the Splains. Mm -hmm. So every morning when I used to clock in, they was just to always be the first people I see. And I was like, how can I get into this? They was like, you didn't know about Superior? And they gave me the, you know, the website and they told me like, hey, we offer a class every three months and I think this is something you can do, so. Yeah, back then we were off three months, every three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> And I tried to take it during COVID when it first COVID first started, but it was like with the hospital schedules, I was doing like 16 to 20 hour shifts. It was kind of difficult, but once it's kind of settled down and they told me about the EMR program, I hopped on it really quick as ever. So it was the best decision I made so far. That's awesome. That's great. I, I want to go back to, you said you're, you know, you, you worked your way into a manager after a year of being an EMT, you started as an EMR and you're always looking to level up. Mm -hmm. So what, what are your like long-term plans? I know you were just accepted into medical school. Congrats! Ooh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. At uh, St. Francis, right? Correct. Awesome, yes. very cool. Um, so, what what are your what are your goals? What are your plans? What's your next level up? 
Um, so after I complete the course, and hopefully in October, uh, November, the course is in November. Um, There's no hope that you're Yeah, it's, you know, once it gets, you're gonna get yeah. past that, that little hump, you know. <laughs> but um, my goal is to hopefully get on uh, the flight team. Uh, once, that was the first thing they told me in like an orientation was yeah. like, we have a great flight team here, and all you gotta be is a critical care uh, medic, and I was like, that's something I wanna do. I wanna be in the skies, not just on the grounds, you know, doing transports but getting that field, actually experiencing uh, some real critical care, you know, in a different level, like you said. Yeah, awesome. That's, cool. awesome. that's really cool. I, we can't wait to have you back on, kind of like we had JP with his flights. Yeah, that'd be We'll nice. have you back on, that's, that's oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely be <laughs> um, open to stop by again. EMR, uh, EMT, your paramedic school, but right before that, your manager of displays. Um, what is something, what, what advice that you would give to somebody in orientation coming out uh, that's maybe thinking, Hey, I want to make a career out of this. I want to get into management. How the heck do I do it that fast? You know, that's awesome that, that, that you got there. Well, um, give um, some advice that you give somebody that's, that's starting off. That's actually a good question. Um, for me, was I was always eager to work. So and not just having a set partner. So I, even on my off days, schedule off days, I used to always pick up a lot of shifts so I can work with random people from different stations and get key points and like how can I make better self for myself. And how can I contribute to you know to a station? And being get to know your station, especially the station that you work at, and that's something you want to take over and help to make it thrive to better than it was before. Even though we have great managers before, but everybody had followed their own career path. So um, when I got the call, just saying that I was interested, um, would I be interested in, in becoming a manager? I at first I was a little hesitant because I was like maybe because I'm still new and it's been people here like for five, ten years, like I said before that you know, might know a little more, but I just had a great personality and connection with all my uh, peers, and they was like, this is a no-brainer. We, we want to follow you, and I want, my favorite thing to say is strive for greatness, so I tell my crews that every morning, it's like, hey, whatever it is you're doing, even if it's a simple, quick trans two-minute transport, make sure that patient is getting the best care you can, even if it's just taking one little blood pressure or getting bumping up the oxygen in one level, so. They took that to heart and they see that I actually we got a passion for this career and we just want to see make sure our patients take good best care they can get. So awesome. That's that's Love really it. good. Um, speaking of just kind of going the extra mile, I remember when I was when I was starting off, I was uh, I was working with a partner <coughs> and he had a certain way of making the bed. Mm -hmm. We always had a, a towel as we had in, but then uh, every now and then uh, he would actually fold the towels into like a swan. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he did it. I think he, he might have worked at a hotel or something, but he would fold <laughs> it like a swan or something. And he always carries these like York Huckabee patties awesome. and put it on there. I thought it was, I'm like, that you're so cheesy, you're so corny. <laughs> the patients loved it. They loved, they it. loved yeah. it. It was insane, it was great. I remember that. I just, some patients were, they just kind of, it brightened their day. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, this is this is nice. This is a five star, service. five star hotel uh, on the road, mobile, mobile, uh, uh, hotel room, you know. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's kind of like what we were telling. Strive for greatness, you know. It, it's it's not their the best day of their life. They have to get in an ambulance, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's bumpy. It's loud, but it does pay off to to be, you know, professional, you know, sympathetic mm -hmm. to, to your patients. So there's been times where I think my patients didn't say not two words to me, but just <laughs> held my hand the entire ride. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always a bee by that is, there's my time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, awesome. Uh, it is Black History Month, and we do like to kind of um, commemorate it and just kind of celebrate it. I did see your your door. It looks yeah. awesome. Thanks. I'm very jealous. I'm <laughs> going to make some phone calls. Amazon. And, and get, Amazon. Nice. I, I'm gonna go in there and get some. Um, we were at the Bulls game last night and they did play, um, it's the Black History Month National Anthem, mm -hmm. uh, Lift Every Voice. Love it. I love that song. Mm -hmm. I asked Dave when we were working, I'm like, I can't wait to see that song. I can't wait for you to play it. It's, <laughs> I, I just like the rendition that they had they at, the, at the Bulls game. Um, what does Black History Month mean to you? Um, for me, it just shows that, you know, in history books that we did make contribute to a lot of great things we have here. So like, for some cop off my head, like the peanut butter, who doesn't love PB&J? Washington. Yeah. Carver. Carver. Yeah. Carver. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that trivia. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I know nothing. Um, you know, even contribute to the stoplights that we, we go through. So no way. It's like, a lot of stuff like that. Kevin Tumnan, you know, fighting Martin Luther King, fighting for a right. So it's 
it shows that, you know, how we came so far within these years that, you know, they had to go through the trial and the errors and you know, to what we see now, it's like we're still getting there. We're not where we want to, but we're striving each and every year. So that's what I'm hoping to see as the next future continues on. So. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I think this year uh, the theme is, is artists. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a nod to art, all different types of artists. So if you consider like music, theater, you know, or work, painting <laughs> and drawing, you know what I mean. Uh, what, what would be like your favorite favorite artist that you would mm. See, uh, as growing up in Chicago, you can't go wrong with Kanye West, even though yeah. he has a <laughs> moments. moments. But you know, <laughs> what he did for the music, he changed the how the sounds and how people are delivering their uh, videos and in their workplace. So I think it's like he definitely paved the way for a lot of the next couple of Chicago artists. Awesome. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of stories about him, just like how he kind of came came onto the scene at like Jamie Foxx's party and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He was he was not known, but he was like. And he's not even from Chicago. He wasn't born in Chicago. No, right? he was born in. Uh, so I know he grew up here, but. He, he yeah, he grew up. He, like, he's basically from it because he, he's just. He that's all he pretty all much, yeah. yeah. His mem fond memories yeah. came from here, so. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Like, we got to have to fact check, fact check where he's, <laughs> uh, where he's from. Do we have Siri right now? <laughs> I got I got technology. Your I got you. It's got Siri. technology. Where was Kanye West born? Just gonna say there you go. That's like, yes, that's yeah, seriously. Yeah, he's from another music city. That's awesome. Um, displaying station manager. Any, any, um, anything you want to shout out to the displaying station? Anything you want to say to them? Because I know hopefully they're watching. Hopefully they tune in and watch. Uh, yeah, I got a few words. I just want to thank you guys for all the hard work and you know Dylan and I. Random fun facts of the day. I just asked random my crews like, "Hey, just give me a random fun facts." We can go from, "Oh, did you know lions? Uh, they have to run in packs because in the jungle, if they are single singled out, they can get attacked by any like predators." So you got your coyotes, you got your rhinos, depending where you're like in Africa and stuff. So, and you know, it just it gets me intertwined with my uh, crews to let me know what you're thinking right now. Instead of thinking up the sides to get before you go from service, you got to call up and start running calls. Just the same thing that comes on your mind. So I just want to thank you for that. Uh, just thank you guys for you know making time and commitment and picking up extra shifts when when I don't hassle, but they we do it out of the kindness of their heart. It's like you know what I love what I'm doing. So do you mind if I can work this extra shift? Maybe if I can go with ALS, can I reach out to Barlotti or you know to do a right CCT just so I can get that experience? So I like you know that's a couple things I want to say to you guys. But just keep up the good work and keep striving for greatness. Good mindset before sure. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Awesome. Um, tell us a little bit about paramedic school. How was that process? I know Ooh. everyone wants to know. What, what advice would you give someone who's thinking about going to paramedic school? So my advice is uh, stay prepared. Um, it's a lot of time management, uh, especially as running a station, full-time station, and going to school full-time. It can be challenging, but once you get a flow, um, you have a great uh, schedule that you can work around. I think uh, and you have a great crew that works in your region to help out on days that you're going to be stuck in class or you're going to be stuck in clinicals. I'm fortunate enough to have great people working in the North region. So when I do, they ask me, hey, do we need anything? Do you need to uh, take over your station for a little bit so you can get the extra study in? I'm more than willing to do that. So that's awesome. It's great teamwork. Shout out. Who, who is it? Shout out to uh, Sebastian, Joe, and awesome. my regional manager, Adam. For, yeah, uh, definitely sticking with me. Yeah, it's a, a dream team. Right the A team. <laughs> the A team. We're still looking for an Epson manager, but when that person comes, hopefully yeah, that's, that's your plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cross um, fingers. Yeah, Epson's a really nice Epson station. station. Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah I remember, I remember the Gene was over there, but yeah, the Epson station is really nice. We have a nice like, classroom upstairs. Mm -hmm. which is so it's one of the newer build stations. Yeah. yeah. Great location. And the hospitals over there are amazing. You got Evanston, St. Francis. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to see some of the Serious calls from the cities over there. Oh yeah, you know, they all do the North Shore shuffle, so no one can't turn that down. Shuffle, I remember when I got stuck in that shuffle a couple of times. So it's just that quick little bounce from the yeah. Shores Hospital. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so we took a deep dive. So our team investigators took a deep dive into the archives, and we found out that um, Cadet uh, was a was in track in high school. Mm, it was, it was. He's very good at track. 
I mean, I don't know about now. I'm sure, I'm sure you're. Um, now they a little old now, but you know, back in my heyday, I was definitely uh, one of the top runners in my school. Can, can what was we, your event? Yeah. Oh, I was a sprinter, so I did all the hundred meter sprints, two hundreds. My uh, my favorite, the four hundred meter dash. Nice. You know, I just like to go all out. That's all I'm good for one good lap. You know. <laughs> in high school, I did one day of track. It was like a tri- what was it a try? It was like a workout, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't do running. I, I don't do running either. There's no running. I mean, there's something not running the way. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, I, but like, we have some people here that love, Tiffany loves running, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. like, if it's, if it's your thing, like, yeah, awesome, but I keep it. But. Yeah, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, almost walk on at University of Kentucky for oh. track before I got hurt my senior right the day before my prom, so. That's oh my gosh. <laughs> but I still made my prom, though. <laughs> so there you go. Good for you. That's insane. Well, yeah. we have, we do have a picture we wanted to show you. Um, Where's that first? This one. The other one. Oh. The other one first. The other one first. Because this one is. Um, one job. <laughs> so this is the Lakeview High School Boys Track MVP. Yes. 2011-2012 with Cadet's name on oh it. Oh my god, that's so awesome. This is some years. Oh my goodness. Just, uh, just so you didn't think we were just like goofing. He was yeah. very, very good at track. Yes, right? he was. Very quick. Uh, what was your mile time? Uh, whew, I haven't ran a mile. I was always a sprinter. <laughs> yeah, I was, he was a meme. <laughs> <laughs> one good lap, Argo. One good lap. There was, a, there was a meme the other day that I saw that was like, all right, everyone was an adult. When was the last time you like sprinted? Like a full on sprint. Not because you're you're like, you know, anything anything like in particular, but just when was the last time you had like a sprint when you went full speed somewhere? Not because you're working out. I cannot playing. think of one. Mm, yeah. Can you? Can you? <laughs> and that's what everyone's response was like, yeah, I haven't ran in such a long time. Like, I don't remember the last time I went full, full sprint was. Yeah, probably full sprint was probably just racing my friends in college. <laughs> that's the only time I can think of. It's like, yeah. I just called me out saying, no, you're not that fast. So I was like, I, I mean, I just moved quick go. when like my kid tries to grab something and put it in his mouth. I've moved very fast, but mm-hmm. not like sprinted. Yeah, maybe before I got my car, you know, I probably sprinted to get make the bus stop or, so, <laughs> right. or the train, you know. I'm just the only time I could think of. And I hope I never have to sprint because yeah. if I'm having to sprint, something not good is going on. We're and I'm not going to make it. We're running because <laughs> we're running trying to survive. Yes. <laughs> my guess is my sprint is a jog compared to you guys. So. <laughs> I don't know. My knees hurt a lot, so I don't know if I'll, if I'll be able to. Oh, I'm um, to that age now. <laughs> so right. <it's> really. <laughs> um. But yeah, um, we did see that you yeah you were gonna uh, go to uh, University of Kentucky to go um, be in their track um, track um, team, and well, you said you, you hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. I uh, in the middle of my uh, two hundred meter dash in the corner, okay. I tore uh, part of my left hamstring, so Ouch. it was the worst pain ever. I was, well, like, was sorry, I'm I'm so sorry. You said right before prompt, I thought you were like practicing dance. No, literally. Which, which you like <laughs> injured actually, yourself and like, well, that, that goes my career. I was doing the cha-cha slide too literally, hard. literally um, at my sectional <laughs> meet to go down to state down in um, Charleston, uh, yeah. EIU, and um, I just hit the curb. I guess I just bent the run. I don't know what happened. It just happened so fast. And literally, I remember just calling my prom date th- that day of. It's like, hey, I'm just letting you know. If this pain doesn't go down the next day, then we're gonna have to figure something out. I might be in crutches or I might be in a wheelchair for a little bit, but I'll make sure I can make sure that you know still be at the part of the dance. So. You know what's so funny? So our senior investigators didn't cover that. We were, mm-hmm. we were gonna show you a picture of so there's two pictures mm-hmm. that we found. One was uh, when your prom date said yes, mm-hmm. and the other one the day of your prom date. You guys looked awesome, but I did not know that happened right in between. That would have yep. been. Awesome yeah, picture to actually come on. We're gonna, yeah. we're still gonna send it. We, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we're gonna post it. Yeah, so we're talking about it. it's gonna happen. Um, so their next picture, we actually talk of the five amigos. Oh, the five amigos. amigos. <laughs> so I guess you have a YouTube. You had a YouTube channel back then. I did for a little <laughs> bit. I tried to dabble in the YouTube world. So if you guys are ever interested, follow track underscore lord fourteen. <laughs> and I just want to want you guys to. I want you to talk to oh, us about what was happening goodness. during that picture. How, how long ago was that? Ooh, I think I was probably going in my freshman year when this happened. Of high school? Of high school. <laughs> oh. This is baby face me, so yeah, it was definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely a freshman year. Because I started growing a beard and a little bit mustache, like sophomore year, so. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's all it's here. I totally forgot that was on there. Well, our team, that's why we pay them so much. That, yeah, because I'm sitting over there like, I need to take this stuff oh, out. I, like, I, I think everyone needs a hard wipe of like anything before like five years ago. Yeah. Mm. Anything that I think I need a hard wipe on. There should myself. be a refresh button like on our yeah. profile that says, you know, wipe and refresh. Mm -hmm. oh, I feel like there's some stuff on there I don't, I, I gotta put it five years ago. I, I still have like, these glasses to this day. Do you really? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Um, so yeah, we uh, we did talk to them. They, they said um, you were into, into Trek a lot. Um, YouTube channel, I guess it started up again. It's a big topic. You should, yeah. 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 It's always I mean, fun. And I'm trying to get my little brothers to do something. So maybe there's something we can uh, do together during my free time. Probably after med school, I'll handle it. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you know. His thing. Um, or you could do the trials and tribulations of med school. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> cover my pain. <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> I know it's not always um, like wanted, but I always I always feel like I, I went through medical school in 2020. It was it was tough because it was during COVID. COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel every college, every paramedic program nowadays has something that that's gonna kind of put a damper on things, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what, what it is, but um, if you want to take it, run with it. But word of advice during medical school: make some time for yourself. Right? Make some time for yourself. I remember in medical school, I was the most I ever played golf. It was like when I was first getting started, but I went out, every little chance I got, I got mm -hmm. to go outside, walk. It was one of the very few things that was open still during COVID because mm -hmm. there was no like close contact. No contact. It, was, yeah. it was just like, you can only play by yourself, no golf carts, walk in. I said, yes, that's exactly, this is cheap, man. So we still walk in. I was in medical school. So make some time for yourself, right? Yeah, Mental probably. health, right? That's that's super important. You don't want to get burned out in medical school. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you said it, time management. Now, I think that's, when everyone asks me about well, like medical school, I say time management is super important. Yeah, trying to manage everything at once is like. So now manage a little bit of time for yourself. Of course. Do something you like. Don't run. Don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I can't walk in limping in the clinic and be like, "Are you the patient or are you here to help?" Right. <laughs> right. Um, that's awesome. Well, um, let's get to our, our last and final and most important question. Most important question: What is your caffeinated beverage of choice? Oh. So for me, I usually, um, I've been cutting back on my energy drink, so yeah, okay. I was drinking more of a C4s. C4s. So, yeah. um, the Starburst <laughs> failure, oh my God, it's one of my favorites. It's, it's C4s, uh, so it's a pre, originally pre-workout, mm -hmm. right? Uh, um, you see that tingly thing in your face, yeah. you've been working the beta alanine and stuff. Um, I can't do those, man. No. Not anymore. <laughs> Coffee makes me jittery like why am i going so, so fast like, mm. and why am i like anxious so fast but um yeah no energy or pre-workout drinks yeah i've been trying to cut back i'm trying to limit it to only when i absolutely need it but you know especially now is like i'm trying to still balance studying and work especially i'm like i gotta have at least a half cup at least you yeah. know to get me through the day yeah. um, well just really quick let me plug this in right before uh we talk about our mugs and, and the coffee but um we are going to be having a paramedic info session pretty soon. So February 21st. February 21st, put in your calendars. Um, if you guys want to comment down anything you guys want to maybe know more about well, with the paramedic info session, we're going to talk about what programs are out there right now, um, how to kind of apply to them, what paperwork you need, kind of give you tips and tricks. Uh, you'll get to meet some of the people who have went through the program already or through the sponsorship program already as well. We'll talk about the sponsorship, how can Superior pay for your paramedic school. And then maybe a little bit further on, we'll have a little bit of like a paramedic transition class where we kind of get you geared up, give you the tools um, to kind of get started in paramedic school to kind of help you along the way. I think it, I think it's important. I wish I wish they had that for me. Yeah, I, I wish I knew that beforehand because it was definitely a so, challenge trying to get into it. So yeah, so, yeah right. It's it's, well, you're it's like, a little competitive. I right? think your story is one of many, one of a few stories that pushed us to be like we need to support our EMT. So that's thank you for thank you. letting us know how it went for you, so that we know what we can do to help future people. Appreciate yeah, it. Maybe the way. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, EMR, that's EMT, that does. That's the awesome. way. That's and great. hopefully, you know, once that's all done, get that critical care and be like, Heck yeah, another awesome. stuff to talk about. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. great. Yeah, Love follow it. the journey. <laughs> um, and then at, at some point, we do, we do want to have a um, for those who are in medical school now a some sort of like study session mm -hmm. where we kind of go. We have a bunch of awesome paramedic, uh, paramedics and education and instructors that um, have gone through the program. Mackenzie just went through the program. Yeah, my right? instructor for ENT. St. Francis, right? Mm -hmm. your instructor, there you go. 
Um, mine was in 2020, so it wasn't that recent, but we have so many that have gone through the program recently that can kind of give you good tips, mm -hmm. tips and tricks, and then just maybe, hey, this is what you need to study a little bit more. Of. That's as, always good, right? As far as tutoring, um, until we get something um, solid in place, Anybody out there, cadet, you, anybody you know that's in paramedic school right now that needs help, please just reach out to our team. Yeah. We're, one of us will make time for you. Yeah, we, we're already in the talks right now. Mm -hmm. we, we're, he's, we're coming in for uh, a little study session at some point. Right? Yeah, definitely, because especially the first exam's coming up, so there just gotta go. try to figure out how the testing is to run that, so yeah. just wanna keep them, hopefully pass on this to my classmates that, you know, part of Superior, even the ones that are different programs, I'm hoping, you know, they can make time during their busy schedule to get up here group session and I just want to see my whole class or uh, graduate at the end so awesome. the promised land oh yeah in yeah. medical school we had one guy that was like not doing it and we we're like we are not gonna let you awesome. I think at some point we just made it our like our mission, our, our mission yeah. to get him through we're like mm -hmm. we, we're gonna help him whether he likes it or not because he was still he was going off like no you know what maybe it's not for me like no enough of that no, you, you made it this far to get <laughs> right. this program right. got this yeah That's right awesome. All right. Tell me about your mug there, Marco. My mug? Well, my mug is pretty special. Um, yeah. It's my son's mug. Um, it's a S So he loves tractors, excavators, anything big, yellow, and construction, you know, stuff. Awesome. So you, you give him a, a little excavator, and he'll tell you every single part of what, what, whatever is in there. He watches a bunch of, like, monster trucks and tractor shows, and they kind of nice. explain to him, like, oh, this is called the, um, I don't know. Called it's the scoop, yes. <laughs> the, bucket. The, the bucket, bucket, the bucket. I, I Troy can help me out a little bit. The boom, Troy. the bucket, the cab, the engine, the tray. He tells you all of them. I gotta take another lesson from him. But shout out to Troy. He let me borrow his mug today. It's a little excavator scoop. Love it. And love it's great. I, I love, love that. that. <laughs> Tell us about your your mug there, cadet. Um, see, I'm a big uh, superhero fan. Uh, I grew up watching a lot of DC and Marvel movies, so. I mean, especially the way I'm feeling, like I'm trying to feel super, so I feel yeah. like if anything, I can fight, if anything comes towards my way, I can fight it. So, so definitely went with the, the Superman mug. Love it. So just try to, you know, be the greatest superhero out here. There you go. <laughs> awesome, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Like what are we supporting today? Old, Ooh, old, old school, school Superior. Yeah. Look this at that. Like EMS week circa, I don't even know. Like somebody, somebody out there helped me. <laughs> 2008, 2010, maybe 11 or 12, I don't know, whatever. But thank you for my mug. I love it. <laughs> I, I feel like those mugs kind of help you out a little bit because it also makes you get up from your from your desk. I feel like they're very small too. Like they're small, so you're like, hey, you know what? They I, are, it makes you. Yeah, it makes me get my <laughs> This is the Definitely. the watch. So you know how the watch sometimes will tell you those that have Apple watches. Yeah, it'll tell you, hey, stand up. It'll tell you sometimes. It'll say, hey, it's time to stand up. To kind of breathe. <laughs> <laughs> well, this well, is this is before. Watch do that for me. Right. Stand up. No, because I'm saying the you coffee mug now acts like it. It's yeah. like, hey, let's stand up. You had enough coffee. Let's I love it. Some more. I love it. Awesome. Well, uh, Cadet, thank you so much for being on the show. It was uh, it was really really cool. Yeah. Um, it was yeah. really really nice seeing how you went from, you know, just when you started off EMR, EMT, management, para, uh, EMT, uh, paramedic school. We can't wait. Um, we're gonna post some pictures maybe along the way when you're like in medical school if you have to anything send us over we'll, of course. we let we'd love to keep track yeah right absolutely. let's let's, let's Come do that. check in with us oh definitely and will definitely we will let the pictures. viewers know how cadet yeah. is doing or stop in and pop in like uh chase did. like chase did earlier <laughs> <laughs> shout out to chase if i see a couple pictures of me just confused <laughs> just know that it was a great thing <laughs> i think we all were there yes we were, school we is a confusing time. Time. Yes. it's like a phase in our life with ems yeah. mm -hmm. Paramedic school is a confusing time in our, in our lives. And we just started an IV, so hopefully nice. we never start our triage That's in a fun. couple weeks. So can't wait for that to interact with some real patients instead yeah. of each other's. So seeing different types of veins and where can you enter at. So hope you enjoy. That's nice. always fun. You got let, this. let me know where uh, live I, IV day is. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll go and supervise you. You're not starting an IV. Don't trust me yet. I don't need I mean, it's I have very bad. good veins, but yeah. I don't like needles. So. Yeah. Cool. All right, yeah. awesome. Thanks Cheers, so much for that. Cheers. Thank you guys for having me. Cheers, guys. Bye, guys.